Welcome, friends, and all the supporter of our Google Build School Foundation channel, Tai Jimmy and me, meaning Teacher Jimmy in America. Today, it's such an honor and privilege to me to welcome one of our dear friends who has been a long supporter of our mission of our Build School Foundation, of our Engage with Toastmaster, especially the division V in Vietnam. Everybody, let's give a warm welcome to mm -hmm. Miss. Jillian Mitchell, I just call her Jill. <laughs> Hi, Jimmy. Thank Hi, you Jim. so much How for having you? me. This is awesome. Really fun. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So let's introduce a little bit about your background. Sure. Where are you? I mean, San Diego, where are you? I'm in Victoria, BC, Canada. So I'm just north of you, quite a bit north <laughs> on an yeah. island, so Vancouver Island. About four and a half to five hours to Seattle, right? That's a, yeah. that's a nearest. Yeah, about four hours. Knows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And okay. a ferry ride. A little bit so it's a... about Jill. Besides, yeah. she's gorgeous and you'll have a cool voice. Jill is a recording <laughs> artist. She's a vocal coach, right? And soon to be author. I think you're probably an author by now, right? You're, you're oh, you would author. think so. You would think so. But it, it, we're, we're going through some more tweaks on that one. But it's coming. Okay. It's coming. Okay. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. You a mom with two children, right? Mm -hmm. uh, your husband yeah. is Sean. Uh, yeah. You live in British, um, Victoria, British, uh, Canada. We already know that. Yeah. Yeah. Professional singing and coaching professionally for almost 20 years. Oh my oh, God, yeah. you did it when you're five years old or something? <laughs> oh, you're so kind. <laughs> it's my lotion. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've been I've been singing um, in public since I was 16. And uh, so now it's over. I just turned 40. So it's a it's a quite a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's been fun. The wild ride. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Mm. I, I thought you you not passed 25 in my book. So it's just amazing. <laughs> All right, people see have a good coach I and mean, have a good boy be a good boy coach and have uh -huh. a wonderful singing career. Seem keep you young. That seems to be that's a secret. So let's jump right into this. Sure. We connect with each other because you interview me for Toastmasters yeah. and you know, magazines and, and you know have the article, stuff like that. And you you also a voice coach and also the TEDx coach mm -hmm. for uh, RRU, which is Royal Roads University yes. in your neck of the wood, Victoria, British Columbia. Mm -hmm. And you are the founder of Voxana, Voxana, V-O-X-S-A-N-A. The name is a little bit interesting. Can you give us a little bit of background about why you come up with that name, Voxana? Sure. Yeah, I was looking for a cool business name at the time. I was I was uh, vocal coaching and wanting to go out on my own. I was working at a music school, um, but it's always in the name. You you need something catchy and something that that encompasses what you do. And at that point, I realized that voice was a lot more than just sounds. It was a person. It's a human instrument. Right. And so I went and I looked through, um, Vox is a, is a term we use a lot in music. It, you know, it's in Latin for voice. So often on stage, we'll say, you know, the Vox channel or, you know, stuff like that. So it was a word that was very familiar to me. So I went in the Latin direction and I found the word sauna, which depending on which dictionary you look at, it means health and or healing. And I thought, that is so cool. Voice health, voice healing. That really encompasses the work I do, even though we're talking about making your voice um, more resonant and open and free. We're actually dealing with a lot of blocks to that voice. So, and vocal health obviously is how your physical health affects your voice. That's definitely in there too. So it really felt right. And I, I just appreciate that you, it resonates with you. That's awesome. Yeah. So basically, the vasana implies you can use your voice yeah. to fix things, right? To heal. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's so true because my wife is a karaoke queen. That's a nickname. Oh. And every time I upset her, which I do quite a lot, she just go into her karaoke system and she just bow out for hours. Oh, girl. And after that, she felt a lot better. So something yes. to do with healing and singing and voice. And moving that energy, moving the air, moving the breath, exchanging the air out, it's, it's really powerful. Music is definitely healing. Yeah. Wow, that's powerful. Now, let's tailor that voice and that mm -hmm. healing 
into something that related to both of us very near and dear to us, which is Toastmasters, mm -hmm. which is an organization that helps people to improve their leadership and communication skills. So communication, mm -hmm. you cannot talk without, uh, communicate without talking and have your mm -hmm. voice, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how we connect it and we do a lot of these things. So today I'd like to focus, Jill, if you don't mind, in specific group of Toastmasters that really near, near and dear to my heart, which mm -hmm. are the Vietnamese Toastmasters in Vietnam or even the Vietnamese American uh, Toastmasters members around the world uh, uh, mm -hmm. or in America too. And one of the thing about Vietnamese people, and I can share that with you because I came to America when I'm 20 years old, that when I first learned to speak English, right? So mm -hmm. we're always shy and we always think that we speak English with that accent, we're not good enough. That's why we're afraid to go into platforms like Toastmaster and make speeches because we keep thinking, oh, our voice is terrible, our voice, you know, English is not good. And those are the things that kind of hold it back. But mm -hmm. based on you, if you can fix that voice, you can fix that, you know, block in you, then you can unleash the power of your voice. Mm -hmm. So based on your almost 20 years of coaching experience, what do you feel sum up the uh, voice challenges that Vietnamese, uh, you know, speaker of the English language might have and you might be able to help them today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's an awesome question. And when you asked me to be on your show, I was just so honored because um, I see a lot of different clients from a lot of different backgrounds. And it's interesting that they all share the same, especially the English as second language speakers, right. they all share the same shyness. Um, and so if I could put that forth as one of the blocks that I see is um, shy to put themselves out there, perhaps because it's not perfect um, like you said, there's an accent there. So I wanted to just address some of those things. Um, the first thing is people are usually more patient than you might imagine, and they actually want to engage you. They want to speak with you. If you have the inkling to learn English and use it out in the world, someone's going to have the inkling to listen and help you out and then really have a conversation. So number one, we want to hear your voice. Right. Yeah. Number two is an accent is not a bad thing. It's actually our ears are really trained to love sounds that are different. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's very interesting. So if you're unique and different, first of all, every single voice on the planet is unique and different. There's no two voices the same, even identical twins, triplets, you name it. They all have different DNA in their vocal cords and how their voice works. It's really fast. It's like a fingerprint. So you have a sound print. So mm -hmm. already you win. You have something unique and different. So we want to hear that. Um, and so I would just say that the third piece, and, and I know we'll get into the, the you know, steps in just a moment, right. but the third piece is that um, in English, there's a lot of fluidity to our language. Mm -hmm. So um, instead of me saying, my name is Jill, da, 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 I would say, my name is Jill, almost as if it's one word, you know, supermarket. My yeah. name is Jill. Uh, it, it really, there's a fluidity there. So if you're concerned and all about, um, oftentimes when we bring this fluidity in, the accent is not as um, prominent. But again, there's nothing wrong with that accent. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. I, I can definitely relate it to that because I do believe mm -hmm. that even though after I've been in America for almost 40 years now, mm -hmm. I still speak English with an accent, but that is my heritage and I don't deny yeah. it. And I don't exactly. want to lose that, right? As long as I can communicate clearly and people understand me, having mm -hmm. an accent is not a bad thing. I like what you say in there because you can see the Californians, English speaker, and the New Yorkers and the uh, the Texans. I don't understand most of the time when the Texans speak to me in English. So that's just because yeah. they have an accent. It's just identify their heritage, where they're from. And, yeah. and that's something that we should celebrate instead of being yes. accent. I agree. We don't we don't want to rub out the accent because unless you are doing a movie role and you cannot have an accent, right. there's no reason to get rid of it completely. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's something you worry about, but I don't think I would be ever be on TV. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about that part, Jill. All right. So you already identified that the Vietnamese uh, English speaker should feel proud of their accent. Yes. Should yes. pay some of the attention to you use the term, I really like that, the fluidity, the, mm -hmm. or, or sometimes in your 
in your detail, you use the word melody. Which yeah, you melody. Did. So can mm -hmm. you explain a little bit more about the three index that you identify in our discussion, the B and the S and the M, what are they and how can Vietnamese mm -hmm. English speakers improve in each of that field? Yeah, so uh, I had a wonderful chat with you and we broke it down to the BSM index and I love this and I'm going to take it forward and rock it. But basically it breaks down to breath, speed and melody. Okay. So in English, if you're if it's your second language, there's a few things we want to remember and it's the B, S, and the M. If you remember those three things, you're going to come out way more confident as a speaker and feel really good about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So breath is number one because the first thing that happens if we're shy and nervous is we forget to breathe. And without breath, we that I mean, that's the gas to our engine, to our vehicle, sorry. So it, without the breath, our voice doesn't work as open, free, and resonant as we need it to be. And it's really important to have that breath working for that open free instrument because that sets your listener at ease. Mm -hmm. It tells them that everything is fine. <laughs> and it's a subtle message. It's a vibe, if you will, but that's definitely what's happening. Okay. So the breath, we just really want to make sure that we're taking nice breaths and we can go through an exercise in just a moment, okay. but a breath not in the chest <laughs> where we all breathe every day at the computer hunched over. We want to open that posture and take that breath down at least to the rib cage, so the middle zone. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that we're not seeing a lot of extra movement in that breath. Mm -hmm. Okay, we just want to in the middle section. So that's breath. If we have that breath in the gas tank, then we can use it for the melody and we can use it for the speed. Mm -hmm. um, do you want me to jump into the other two now, Jimmy? Speed uh, and melody? We can do a demonstration of a good breath and a bad uh, breath. So that would be a tip number one. Yeah. yeah so, exercise um, number one that they can practice, right? Perfect. So let's do exercise number one. So if I am sitting like this and I am trying to get a big, deep breath, we can certainly see that in that midsection where it crumples, mm -hmm. it's really hard to open up. And especially if I'm not even breathing down to my midsection, we have the tiniest bit of air. I see. Uh -huh. So it's just not enough to propel the instrument. If you were going to play a tuba mm -hmm. and you took a breath like that, there's not much sound going to come out of that thing. So we really want to make sure that we take that nice deep breath. So the exercise I always say is put your hand on your rib cage, front right. fingers around the front and thumb around the back. You might not be able to get all around back, but that's fine. Right. And relax those shoulders. So we're going to put them up to our ears and roll them back and down. Perfect. Right. And in just a moment, we're going to blow all the air out and sip it through the lips like a straw and see yeah. if we can get that breath to our hands. It wants to go here and not even go down low at all, but we're going to see if we can sip it in a little lower. Okay, so let's breathe out in just a moment. Here we go. Breathing out and sipping in and then let it out. And what you're watching for is excess movement. So if the chest goes, we don't need that. We want to keep everything nice and, and still if we can while remembering to be fluid, okay? If we're feeling robotic and stiff, we don't want that. Shake it out. Okay, let's do it one more time. Okay. <laughs> I love the shaking out part the best. Yeah. Okay, so let's breathe out in just a moment and try it again. Ready? Exhale, all the air. And sip it in. Yeah, and out. That's it. So eventually in speaking, we do want to breathe through the nose more than the mouth. It's right. a little different than singing and it depends on singing. Some people like uh, nose breathing and singing, but it, it's less dehydrating. So if you can think about it and if you have a cold, you can't. So I understand. So that's breathing. And that's the exercise that I have for you today. So we can cool. move on. So the first exercise, just relax your chest, your upper body, mm -hmm. focus on the midsection or your diaphragm. Got and it. Do yes. Of your breathing in and out from there. Mm -hmm. Keep the metaphor, keep a lot of these air for your engine. I love that. Keep air for You engine. got it. You got engineer, it. As an engineer, know a lot about <laughs> engine. I see that without air, the engine cannot run. So without you got it. air, we cannot have a good voice. Good. You got it. Yeah. So the breath goes into that midsection and it starts from that midsection. So on the exhale, just remember, that's what we're thinking. The belly goes out for the inhale and comes in for the exhale. And then okay. we speak on the exhale. So it's definitely really a consistent contraction. Yeah. Nice. All right. Let's move on to the second cool. letter, which is the S. Mm -hmm. So the S is speed. Oftentimes when we're learning something new, we think we need to be faster than we are. Mm -hmm. um, and what happens when we go a little too fast is we stumble. 
mm. on the words and have to repeat or go back. So I often tell my clients, slow down to speed up. That's a little mantra that I have. If you are slower and more purposeful about your words without trying to be faster, then oftentimes you don't have to repeat yourself as much and uh, it's a clearer communication. So on top of that piece of information, speed in English is varied. It's really varied. Mm -hmm. So we speak really fast when we're excited yeah. and we slow down when we're making a point. So really play with speed. Um, see how, let your emotions and what you're trying to convey dictate how fast things are. It's not one speed all the way across. It's when we're happy or excited or even angry sometimes, we can be faster. But when we're sad or solemn or serious or wanting to make a point, the slower speed is more effective, but also to pausing is really effective. And I think we often forget about that, especially for learning a new language, that it's okay to stop and have silence. It actually emphasizes the point you're trying to make and it makes for clear communication. Yeah. That's awesome. Not only yeah. fast and slow, but the pauses. Let let explore that pauses a little bit because I know the Vietnamese culture, maybe mm -hmm. because they live in a country with a hundred people by the side mm -hmm. of California, it's very crowded and also very hot and humid, and people mm -hmm. just tend to do everything quick and fast or something. But I'm telling you, sometimes I have a hard time understanding my students because they speak so fast. Mm -hmm. And to them, if we ask them for a minute or a moment of silence, it seems to be like <gasps> yes, constantly it's a... noise, right? Constantly, constantly, constantly. Yeah. And we need time to digest what they just yes. transfer the information. So yes. tell us how can they practice to have these pauses when mm. naturally that's not very, you know, um, come natural to them. Mm -hmm. So the best way I kind of guide people into this is be the listener for a moment. And where do you naturally want to stop and think about what that other person said to you? Okay. Usually we can get through with, hi, how are you? Good. How are you? What did you do today? Blah, 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 blah. We can get through the small talk without too many pauses. Right. But if I was to tell you a heartfelt something that, you know, I was struggling with or uh, that happened to me and I'm not sure what to do about, I would naturally just pause for a minute mm -hmm. and slow the speed down for you because I really want each word to land and I really want you to hear me when I'm talking. Uh, it's not the same as the small talk where if you miss a couple words, we're just kind of shooting the breeze and we're just talking. So, um, so really just thinking as a listener, speak as you would think as a listener. I know that's kind of confusing, but where would you want to stop and think about what that other person has said and flip it around? If you said something that really needs, it's a big point or it really needs emphasis or you really need someone to just stop and hear you for a minute, that would be a moment that it would pause, would be very, very, very effective. It's nervous energy to keep going. It's nervous energy to keep chattering. And bless our hearts, you know, we all do it. Uh, it's just a survival tactic. But if you can remember to breathe, the pause leaves time for breathing too. Right. So sometimes it's almost a reset. If you find yourself kind of spinning and, and the energy is, you know, pretty nervous, a pause might be effective there as well. Yeah. Just to give you some reset time. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like, yeah. I like how you incorporate the point number two to point number one, which is you mm -hmm. pause, not only you vary your speed, you pause, but in your pauses, you breathe in, breathe out, whatever, and give you that, you know, half second or one second to mm -hmm. reset instead mm -hmm. of constantly firing. Yeah, we always have that access to breath. And that is one of the best ways to relax. So, and that's the first thing to go when we're nervous. We forget to breathe or we take in tiny bits of air. So we all need a little break there to take in yeah. some air and uh, just fill the tank up again. Yeah. Cool. Now, mm -hmm. let's see what specific exercises that you can guide us to practice more of these change in speeds when we speak and also maybe like, um, you know, handle the pauses. Yeah. So this one was really interesting to me to find an exercise. Um, it's really, you know, each person needs to discern where they need to pause and speed up and slow down. But what I might say is if you have a presentation coming up, 
-hmm. have a read of what you're about to say and jot down some of the emotions that you're feeling in that in that script. So if it's happy or excited or calm or energized or sad or have a look at what the emotions that you think your listener might be feeling mm -hmm. and then judge the speed accordingly. So definitely if you make a big point, say you're at a conference and you need to make this huge statement that's going to rock people's world, right. we definitely need to pause after that because everyone, if we don't pause, what happens is everyone's thinking about that sentence while you're continuing on and they're missing what you're saying. Right. We need a pause. They need to digest that moment and then you can take them forward with you. Yeah. So things like that, that might be really neat. Also, another exercise I would recommend is to watch some effective speakers that you like. Mm -hmm. What are they doing? Why is it effective? Where are they speeding up? Where are they slowing down? That might give you an example of what you can do with your own speech. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do this exercise. I know you you probably have uh, two wonderful children. So let's mm -hmm. say you are ready to take your two children to go out on the very exciting trip or something like that so this right now your emotion is happy excited how do you talk to your two children in that situation <clears throat> so we can oh yeah me, we can demonstrate the oh sure and the speak when you speak up and you're ready to go on the trip let's say to vietnam with your two girls or two children okay so very different than how i'm speaking now it's still my tone or the quality of sound that i'm using but what I might do, because it's kiddos, and this is where the next piece, the melody comes in, is let me talk a little higher like this, because kids really respond to high voices because they have high voices. And it wouldn't be anything contrived. It would be very genuine that I would speak that way, but it would be faster. Hey, kids, oh my goodness, we're going. It's the day. You know, it's travel day. Yay. Yeah. Right? That, so it's faster. Maybe higher. Um, but you can feel that energy as opposed to if I showed up and said, hey, kids, it's travel day. I'm so excited. Um, that's a beautiful voice, <laughs> but <clears throat> I'm not feeling the excitement from that I don't, sound. I didn't do that at all. <laughs> no, right? So, um, yeah, it's just really gauging the situation. And yeah, you can do this in general conversation. And it actually, if you really step back, it happens naturally for us. We don't have to be so in our head about it and plan it out. It actually right. happens. If you're really excited about something, you feel this energy and it gets really, really fast in your body, but in a good way. Yeah. Um, whereas if you're feeling sad, you might feel slower and more lethargic and more, you know, pauses and breathing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, another exercise opposite. Let's say Sean, your husband, right? I'm pretty sure yeah. he's Superman. Uh, he will never do this, but uh, I, I did this a lot, so I'm going to use this exercise so you can demonstrate when you really need to get somebody's attention by speaking slower or express yeah. your feeling a lot more. Let's mm -hmm. say he's absent-minded and he forgot today is your birthday and he <laughs> came home from work with no flowers and no, you know, oh. um, uh, Tiffany box and uh -oh. no, no, no cake or whatnot. How do you uh, respond to that when he walking in and want to get his attention? Mm. So in that situation, some of us may want to yell and scream and get really mad. I'm not very good at getting really mad like that. And I also don't, I mean, it's not effective. So I tend to slow right down and be very serious. <laughs> okay. All right. So I may go, uh, what might I say? Because he's never done this. So I have to think on my feet. Um Hun, what's the date today? I might say. And then um he, you know, he'll look at the calendar and go, Oh my gosh. Like immediately, you know, you kind of have to think about how the other person is going to feel once they realize they've been absent-minded instead of claws out. So I'm I probably might sound a little more angry than that. Like, hun, do do you remember what day it is? <laughs> Very serious. <laughs> But I wouldn't yell and scream. And I feel like there's nothing wrong with that. There's a time and place for that. And anger is really great emotion to have. It, it changes a lot of things in our world. So it's wonderful. But yelling and screaming, name calling, all that kind of stuff. We want to take a step back from that and just really breathe. I used my breathing. I slowed right down. I paused and I asked a question and got curious in that situation. So that would be more of a communication style that I have as I tend to ask questions instead of accuse. Um, but I'm not always perfect. Yeah. yeah. 
I, I love it. I, it seems like all you uh, women and white graduate from same university or something. <laughs> okay, every time I hear Lily told me that, honey, what day is today? I knew something else will come. Something's not right if they're yeah, asking you what day it is. Otherwise, she wouldn't ask me that. And that will yeah. be the longest pauses for that <laughs> second because I will brag my brain and say, what the hell did I do wrong now, right? Because that would be my first reaction. And that's why we give you the pause so you can think about it for a minute. That's right. right. So, so, so all the men <laughs> out there, all the you don't have to be English speaking, you know, uh, mm -hmm. of the language uh, ESL of the English language. All the husbands and all the men out there, either you're in Canada, you're in America, mm -hmm. you're in Vietnam. We are the same boat here, and the mm -hmm. advice from Jill is extremely important. Yeah. Pay attention to, to those slow down pauses. And the toughest question any man have to answer, do you know what day is today? <laughs> right. uh, that is so cool. Oh, All right, awesome. let's roll to our last piece mm -hmm. of the BSM index, which is melody. Can mm -hmm. you expand and demonstrate and maybe an exercise to help our yeah. you know, um, foreign English speakers to practice and improve their melody? Absolutely. So you can see from those two examples, the excited one, Oh, kids. Well, I'm speaking way up here. It's a very high note. So I'm already using range. Whereas when I said, hun, do you know what day it is? Boom, way down here. Right. So already I'm using a lot of range. I want everybody to think of themselves as singers in terms of what their voice can do in the speaking world. You really have a lot of notes to play with. And so we really want to stretch that out. In English, there's a lot of melody that we might not think about. And one of the things is if we say a question mark, what time is it? What time is it? It goes up, right? Or if we're excited, it goes up. Those little punctuation marks, we have melodic cues on those. Mm -hmm. So our voice is already going up. And when you saw me be very serious, my voice went down. <laughs> so we want to use that range. And so an exercise that I like to bring in is um, the siren, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But the other piece to melody is the fluidity of it. I talked about saying, instead of, hi, my name is Jill, chop, 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 word, word, word. We want to make sure that the breath is working with the melody. So as I'm saying my phrase or sentence, we want to make sure that the belly's coming in consistently and not just spurting in. So if I said, hi, my name is Jill, I might feel some pops in that lower belly coming in yeah. very like jarringly. Whereas opposed to what I want to say is, hi, my name is Jill or hi, my name is Jill. There's a real quality to it, almost like a singing note, right? There's yeah. a lot of pulling that. So we see that the belly comes in consistently. Hi, my name is Jill. If you could see down here, you would see that my belly is consistently coming in until I take that next breath and consistently coming in, not pop, 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 and then going out. So the melody and the breath, the sorry, the pitch or range and the breath equates to melody. So I've kind of rolled those into one, right. but they work so well together. You can't help but do it. So right. The exercise I have is actually two, if, you're, if we have time, Jimmy. Sure. The first one, yeah, okay, good. Uh, the first one is a siren. So getting used to playing with range. Mm -hmm. We take an ooh sound from a low note and go up high and back down. Careful not to think up and down because that creates a whole bunch of extra movement that we don't need. Right. So I like to have my hands on the side and I like to do an ooh sound and go up. Whoop, ooh. Ooh. Exactly. And then we do one where we don't stop. Ooh. And what we want to feel is that nothing really changes. If you're feeling, ooh, ooh, if you're feeling that, that's a key sign you're thinking up and down. Okay. And the whole body responds to any cue we give it. So we're going to think side to side. Mindset is key in, in speaking any language or singing anything. If what we think about, we bring about. So we really want to get on board and really think, okay, I'm not going up and down. I'm just right. using, just playing. Woo! That was Ooh. fun. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. My wife always thinking of having a, a void lesson now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so fun. And then the other, yeah. And then the other one is saying your name and joining the, the words together, almost like it's one word in the English language. So instead of, hi, my name is Jill. 
hi, my name is Jill. Or supermarket. Um, I, I know I'm picking on that word because we talked about it earlier. Um, another one I like is from Mary Poppins, supercalifragilistic. It's a big <laughs> word, but your belly's coming in the entire time and you don't stop it because your mind thinks of it as one word. That's what we want to think about the phrases or the sentence as one thought, one sound, one note, if you will. So it becomes very fluid and melodic and our ears really love that kind of stuff. Oh. Truly. Wow. So basically pick a few words that have like maybe eight, 10 syllables and keep saying mm -hmm. those things back and forth. Yes. And so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you got say it. That, got say that Mary, Mary Poppins words one more time. So, I'll, so it, I'll slow it down. It's really slow interesting. Slow down one and do normal and then maybe do it fast. So you do, you vary three yeah. different speeds. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, cool. So this word is actually like twice as long as I'm saying it, but I cut it off. That's right. So it's actually supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. That's the whole word of the song. It's fantastic for a vocal warm up, but we're just going to do the first half super califragilistic. So if I was to break that down, super califragilistic, not very pleasing to the ear. I said it right. It was definitely the right word. It was clear, um, but it was one note and chopped up. So maybe what I want to do to make it more interesting is use the breath to my advantage. So I'm not chop, 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 or tss, 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 with that belly coming in, it's coming in consistently tss, or Ooh, so now it's more fluid. And now what I'm going to do is kind of link my words together as if it's one thought. So I'll say it the way I like to show people how to say it. And then I'll put another sentence in its place. So uh, my favorite song is Supercalifragilistic. Now I did it faster because it's one word. So that's right. fine. But I could say, I really like having pizza for supper. I just did it. Instead of, I really like having pizza for supper. If we hear this sound, that means I'm not breathing. This is a vocal fry sound. Nothing wrong with it, but it is a cue that we're not breathing. So if I said, I like pizza for supper, I am not using my breath. There's no melody. There's no phrasing or fluidity of that melodic phrase. It's just very chopped. So if I said, ooh, I like pizza for supper. It sounds pretty normal, <laughs> right? But it's pl more pleasing to listen to, more melodic. Wow, yeah. I definitely can 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 feel and can hear the difference. So mm -hmm. really, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. The supercalifragilistic. <laughs> it's a big one. Yes. Supercalifragilistic. Yeah. Supercalifragilistic. Yeah. It's got all the sounds too, right? So it's a perfect yeah. word, and it's not or, anything or we ever use. Yes, it's not anything we ever use in English. It's just a, <laughs> a word from a song, but it's perfect. Supercalifragilistic. So what I heard from your melody is that the the breath, the speed, and now they roll into the melody and yeah. make sure you. You keep use the term, don't pop it, don't pop it. So it just you got let it. it out, let it in, let it out, let it in. Mm -hmm. um, I can think of it like, don't rap, right? Don't sing like mm -hmm. a rapper because a rapper, <laughs> they chop, 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 chop. But now yeah. sing like a, yeah. a, a, a singer that, that you know, um, do more of a fluidity and we can have all of these nice, a normal singer instead of a, a rap. A rapper or somebody to do pop, mm -hmm. pop you know, thing like mm -hmm. that. Yep. Another great example is to use a counting exercise. So if you did one, two, three, four, five, okay, that's me being blah, 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 blah. But if you said one, two, three, four, five, it's very subtle. But the other one, the second one has more energy. You feel it. You want to talk to me more because I'm not low on energy, I'm higher on energy. Right. So that's another way to look at it too. Yeah. Cool. These are, yeah, these are very, so very practical and, and, and excited exercises Thank that you. we can just help people, you know, to use um, mm -hmm. these two, three simple uh, exercises and they can practice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Cool. Yep. Very nice. So we, we went over the breath. We went over the speech. We went over the you know melodies. What other advice do you have for Vietnamese English speakers mm. before, you know, we wrap up the show? Jim? 
I think what I want to do is just recap the thing we talked about in the beginning, which is the number one piece of advice. If you take nothing else away, no exercises, nothing, what I want you to take away is that your voice is unique. We want to hear it. We want to talk with you. <laughs> and uh, there's no one like you. So that mindset piece is top top notch like it's it's the number one thing so if you go into conversations feeling more confident and remembering that people want to hear you that's going to make all the difference even more than all the exercises we talked about your accent is fine mm -hmm. <laughs> um we're just talking in this episode about how english speaking is the most effective with our instrument not everybody does this. A lot of times you'll notice, you'll pick out voices that you like listening to on podcasts or TV shows, and this is what they're doing. They're making it more melodic, but not everybody talks this way, right? If you've had voice work, you know about this and you know how to use your instrument effectively. And that is the breath, speed, and melody. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. If you don't remember anything from our voice coach, Jill Mitchell, founder of Barcena, <laughs> keep asking yourself this simple question. Mm -hmm. What is my BSM index? Mm -hmm. Your breath, is that good enough or you need to practice more? Speed, are you speaking monotone or you vary your speed fast, slow? And pauses, pauses, pauses. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, melody. Are you speaking like the way we singing? Mm -hmm. Or are you speaking like somebody just choppy, choppy and pop and, and, and you know, break and lock, stuff like that. So those mm -hmm. are the three key takeaways from our uh, wonderful, beautiful, she's whatever her age, she seems to be 25 to me. <laughs> so uh, there's so Thank many you. things that we can learn from, from Jill in this show, including mm -hmm. not just your boy, how to say young and, and wonderful. Um, with that, I would like to wrap this show up. And um, on behalf of Joe Mitchell, founder of Vasana Thank and you. Jimmy Tai, our YouTube channel, Tai Jimmy and Me, we will see you again in our next episode. Have Thank a you, wonderful Jimmy. weekend, everybody. Thank you, everybody.